Welcome to the last lecture on Chapter 3. This is on Section 3.4, Linear and Angular Speed. What we're going to be looking at in this section um, is how do you calculate linear speed and how do you calculate angular speed. <clears throat> so let's, again, let's, we're talking about um, a unit circle. Um, so a circle that's got its center at the origin. And so when we're talking about linear speed, which is kind of the speed that we know when we're driving, et cetera, here we're literally talking about the speed that you go around the um, circle. So if you start at point B, how fast are we going around this circle, okay? <clears throat> and the speed, just like um, we know in our car is distance over time. This is the easiest formula to remember if you know if you are a driver and you know what a speed limit sign looks like. So you might see a speed limit sign for 35 miles per hour. Miles per hour is miles on the top of the um, fraction or distance on the top per hour, so distance over time. Here we say um, V or velocity or linear speed equals distance. Of course, when we're talking about going around a circle, the distance will be the arc length, S, over any time, okay? Important formula to know, make sure you put it in your notes. Now, as P, or as we move along the circle, the ray, let's say let's point P moves along the circle, around the circle, then what's happening is the angle theta is increasing as we go around the circle, okay? And if we keep going around, um, we would have, like if we go around once, we'd have a theta would equal two pi. If we go around twice, four pi. So it can be more than two pi um, because we may go around a number of times, you know, like the Indianapolis 500, they're not on a 500 mile track, you know, they're on a track, I don't even know how long it is, and then they go around a number of times to equal 500 miles. But here we're trying to figure out the speed of theta. How fast is this angle increasing? How fast is theta, the angle increasing as we go around the circle? This little w is the lowercase omega, the Greek letter, letter omega. So we have omega, or angular speed, equals the angle, theta, over time. Um, pretty much the same thing, right? Distance over time. But here we're looking at the angle's distance or the angle size. Okay? So omega is the angular speed. Theta is the measure of the angle in radians um, at time t. So this is a great little table for you to have in your notes. We have the two main formulas, omega equals theta over t, which is angular speed, and linear speed, v, equals arc length over time, okay? Remember that arc length also equals the radius times the angle, or radius theta. So we can do an alternative formula for um, linear speed, which is r theta over t, okay? And since we have theta over t here, which is the same as what is angular speed, we can see that angular speed and linear speed are um, related by the uh, multiplier of the radius. So linear speed equals radius, which we see there, times um, omega, which is the angular speed. So this is a great table to have in your notes. It's got all the, kind of a bunch of different versions of the formula based upon what we've learned before and then manipulating them. So let's look at an example. Suppose that point P is on a circle with radius 10 centimeters and that ray, OP, is rotating with an angular speed of pi over 18 radians per second. So this is our radius, this is our um, omega, and we want to find uh, the angle generated by P in six seconds. So we're looking for theta. This is omega, this is um, our radius, etc. So remember that um, uh, omega or angular speed equals theta over time. The time is six seconds given to us in problem A. So all we have to do is plug in what we know. 
omega equals pi over t, theta is what we're looking for, and t equals 6. So we plug that in, multiply both sides by 6, and we get 6 pi over 18, or pi over 3 radians. Okay, this is an angular measure, it's not a speed, so it's just radians. Find the distance traveled by P along the circle in six seconds. So here we're going to use our arc length, that's the distance, right, when we're going around a circle. And we know that our theta, from what we just figured out, is pi over 3. We know our radius given to us in the problem is 10. So our arc length is simply 10 times pi over 3. And we get 10 pi over 3 centimeters. If we then want to find the linear speed, remember that our linear speed is the arc length over time. And here we have, uh, remember this is the arc length in six seconds, so we have the arc length over time. And when you have a fraction over a number, it just sinks. This is a sinking fraction, so um, the whole thing will, will sink. The same as dividing by 6 is the same as multiplying by 1 over 6, and that's how it sinks. So we get 10 pi over 18, or 5 pi over 9 centimeters per second. Let's look at another one. A belt runs a pulley of radius 6 centimeters at 80 revolutions per minute. Now, nothing that we've talked about um, so far in these speeds has talked about revolutions per minute. We've looked at um, how fast the linear speed is, which is just a normal distance measure, but it's around the circle. And then we've looked at angular measure, um, which is radians um, over time. But here we have a revolutions per minute, okay? Now, think about it, how, what is one revolution? One time around the circle, what is the arc length for one time around the circle? Well, that's 2 pi. So if we go around the circle 80 times per minute, what is, how do we convert this to radians? Okay, in one minute, the pulley makes 80 revolutions. Each revolution, as I just said, is 2 pi radians. So in one minute, we go around 160 radians per minute, which is an angular speed. However, notice it says it wants the angular speed in radians per second, okay? So we have radians per minute. That means 160 pi radians is in the numerator. Per minute means minutes in the denominator. So we have to multiply this by the factor of minutes and seconds. So one minute in the numerator, so that the minutes will cancel out, equals 60 seconds in the denominator. So we get 160 pi. Oh, I thought it would show it here. We get 160 pi times 1 over 60, right? Because there's one minute for 60 seconds, which is the same thing as 160 pi over 60, which gives us 8 pi over 3 radians per second. So notice here, this was kind of a tricky question. When we did this, we actually got an angular speed, but it wasn't in seconds. Find the linear speed of the belt in centimeters per second. <clears throat> the linear speed, again, is the same as that of a point on the circumference of the pulley that goes around, etc. Right. So now we're trying to measure the distance around the pulley. Remember, this equals the radius times um, omega. This was one of those formulas that we had in that table um, by figuring out um, you know, the different measures that we already had. We just calculated the omega, or the angular speed, is 8 pi over 3. The radius from the example was 6. So we simply have um, 6 times 8 pi over 3, which equals 16 pi which is approximately 50 centimeters per second. And that's just pi, you know, 16 times 3.14. Let's look at another example. This will be our last example for this lecture. So here we're looking to find the linear speed and distance traveled by a satellite. A satellite traveling in a circular orbit 1,600 kilometers above the surface of the Earth takes two hours to make an orbit. 
So it goes around the Earth in two hours. That's actually kind of fast. The radius of the Earth is approximately um, 6,400 kilometers, which you see here. Now, be careful. You know, often this is a mistake students make is they see the word radius, they see a number, and they think, okay, good, I know what I can do now. Remember um, here, it's just arc length over time. Linear speed is um, the arc length over time. <clears throat> but notice that the radius um, of the Earth is not the radius of the circle made by the satellite as it travels around the Earth because it's traveling 1,600 kilometers above the Earth, okay? So we have to add those two together to get the radius for the, saddle, the circle created by the satellite because the satellite is actually flying 8,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, okay? I'm sorry, 8,000 kilometers from the center of the Earth, okay? For one orbit, theta equals 2 pi, and so um, the arc length equals the radius times theta, which is 8,000 times 2 pi, or 16,000 pi kilometers. Since it takes two hours to complete an orbit, the linear speed, again, which is the arc length over time, is 16,000 pi divided by 2, or 8,000 pi which is approximately 25,000 kilometers per hour. That's pretty damn fast. It's pretty damn fast. Imagine flying all the way around the Earth in two hours. You know, you can't even get from probably Dallas to Houston in two hours on a plane. Approximate the distance the satellite travels in 4.5 hours, okay? So here we're trying to figure out, um, we know how far it travels per hour. And now we just want to figure out how much it's going to travel in four and a half hours. So we just multiply and we get 110,000 kilometers. Okay.